Father Rob, where you send your questions into me, Father Rob Baldwin of St. James Episcopal Church, and I answered them here for you on the air. Now, I will admit that today's question was not given to me uh, as part of a Ask Father Rob question. It was not asked to me as so many questions are in the back of the church or in the parish hall or in my church office. Uh, no, today's question came in the form of a prank phone call uh, that came to the office earlier this week. A, a young man, sound like a teenager, called and asked me when we had services here at the church. And I told him that we had our services, as I always do, at, at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and at noon on Tuesdays. He then asked, his voice chuckling at the time, if he thought that perhaps our church services would be appropriate for a Satan worshiper to attend, um, which at this point he and several other young men in the background um, subsided into guffaws. Uh, but I told him, as I will tell anyone, why, of course, I think that our church services would be wonderful for a Satan worshiper to attend, as I think there would be great for anyone to attend, as every person, I think, needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, regardless of what faith tradition they're participating in. But this does bring me to my question, my topic for today, which is to talk about Satan and Satanism um, and its relationship to the church. I'll say this. I think that most young people, who would be self-identified Satan worshipers, uh, do so for three reasons, all of which are not, in my mind, particularly viable. One, they do so because they are looking to get some sort of rise out of people who would be offended by the idea of a Satan worshiper. Uh, a parent, an authority figure, or the greater institution of the church, society as a whole, um, they are looking to get some sort of visceral emotional response. Uh, second, um, they mistakenly believe that what they are participating in is a religious tradition that is separate from Christianity, um, part of some uh, non-Christian religious tradition coming out of Europe that predates or is at least historically separated from Christianity that has been misidentified as Satan worship. Or three, they participate because they believe that there are promises made in this religious tradition um, that you'll be able to get something out of it. Um, I think this is one of the reasons why voodoo is one of the fastest growing religions in the United States and uh, in the world, um, because it promises results. You worship with us, and you will have your dreams, wishes come true. As I say, I don't think that any of the three of these things are necessarily good reasons to participate. Um, for one, a person's faith represents the relationship they have with the being that created them. It goes to the innermost core of their being. And when you take that relationship, that holy relationship, and instead use it as a way of striking out against society or getting a rise out of people or just being a rebellious teenager, you've taken something that is very holy and special and precious and are using it for something that is very shallow and profane. I think this is the same thing as true when you participate in any religion, whether or not it is Satanism or even Christianity, underneath the hopes that this will somehow garner you special prizes or allow your wishes to become true. If you, if you go to church or go to any religious institution with the hopes of winning the lottery or getting that girlfriend that you want or any sort of everyday desire and wish, again, you are taking that sacred relationship and are trying to convert it into something that is less. Also, from a historical standpoint, Satanism itself, um, while I know that historically the church has co-opted the imagery of other religions and put it into Satan worship, the idea of Satan as an individual, as an entity, is a Judeo-Christian concept. Satan appears in the Old Testament briefly, appears much more often in the New Testament as a figure, an entity, something that is referred to by Jesus Christ, depicted in the Gospels and made mention of in the letters of Paul and others. Um, it's, it's a figure that comes out of our tradition. Um, and as such, it is understood to be a figure that is the embodiment of evil. Now, let me talk for a minute about Satan uh, from a Christian and Episcopalian perspective. We understand Satan to be, as I say, the embodiment of sin, of that desire to turn away from God and to do other than what God wants us to do in our lives. Now, it's important to note that we're not 
putting forward sort of a two-God model of the universe here. There's a good God and a bad God, and you make a choice between following a good God or a bad God, and there's any sort of equanimity between the two. Because in doing so, it, it perhaps might send us into a thought that we might not be responsible for the evil that we do in the world. As Flip Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. You know, you can't blame me. I've been tricked. I've been seduced. It's somebody else is making me do something bad, and I'm just a helpless dupe. When that's really, that's not our understanding of sin at all. We are accountable for the actions that we do, and the desire to turn away from God comes from ourselves inside, not from an exterior source. I think the best description I've heard of Satan actually came from a professor of mine in seminary, Donald Luck, who described Satan as being the face that we put on the whole corporate sinfulness of humanity. The metaphor that he used, and I think it's a good one, is it is being like giving a name to the mob psychology of humanity. People who have participated in a vicious mob have talked about how they felt compelled seduced, overwhelmed, to do these things that they would never do on a one-to-one -one basis, but somehow found possible, even acceptable to do in a mob. I think in that same way, we as humanity can, can understand our desire to turn away from God as being a part of a, a larger corpus of a whole that is bigger than the sum of its parts, that can seduce, that can compel, that can somehow sweep us up in that force and have us do things that when we say to ourselves on that single moment, why did I do that? Why would I know that that's wrong, that I still find myself drawn to do it? That we can look at that aspect of our lives, that aspect of that moment in our faith, that spiritual force, and give a name to that and call that Satan. And so in that way, we understand that it's not that we have a second God out there, but that we have this force out there that is constantly working against the desires of God in our lives and the Holy Spirit that is calling us to do the things that we should do, things that are best for us, that are healthiest for us, and that will bring true happiness in our lives and ultimately eternal life. And it's for that reason that I was not frustrated and angry or, or whatever with this young man who was called the church trying to get me to, I don't know, call him names, be outraged, shocked, dismayed. All I was, was was to say, yes, this is a place where people who are lost or confused, who are maybe looking for answers, can come and find the truth and discover the love of God. And discover that God has a plan for their young lives, which are just beginning. And to be able to say, you know, you have identified something in your life which you think gives you those answers. But you've made a very grave mistake, intentionally or unintentionally. And so to that person I would say, hey, church services here at St. James are held at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And at noon on Tuesdays. And that all people are welcome. And we invite you to discover the joy that I and every other member of this church have found being a part of the family here, not just of St. James and Pickwell, but as a part of the body of Christ. And then you can always send your questions to me, Father Rob Baldwin, care of St. James Episcopal Church, 200 West High Street, Pickwell, Ohio, 45356. You can call. Our number is 937-773-1241, or you can email them to us at St. James Piqua, that's S-T-J-A-M-E-S-P-I-Q-U-A, -E at yahoo.com. And whether or not they're serious or not serious, I will take a stab at answering them here on television or online. And YouTube, you can type in Ask Father Rob and find all the episodes of Ask Father Rob there for your perusal. Thanks again for a great question, and I look forward to seeing you again.